everyone. Good afternoon from Chehalis, Washington. I'm all settled into my campsite over here. Got a nice newer site that I've not been to. I'm also, the la I had, it was tough to get level right there, but uh, I got no neighbors down here on this side. So it comes down this way. Got the dump station down there and only partial hookups here. 30 amp and water, no dump station here, but I can make it a few days out here. Except I just got to watch my back, make sure my neighbors don't tattletale on me for being outside my RV. Because we are told to stay in our RVs. As I said, project day and I need to repair a crack in my windshield. I'm going to try to do it myself because Safe Light and Olympia is out two weeks and it's $135 to repair a crack. I think I can do it myself for a little cheaper. The windshield itself is really dirty. I do apologize for that, but the crack is right there. That's the crack. There's a there's a pit, you can hear it. And I don't want it to spread, so I'm gonna try to repair this crack. And here is the kit I got at AutoZone. I already opened it up because I wanted to read the directions. $14.99. And it comes with some directions and stuff and the little plunger with the resin and the sticky stuff. And, and uh, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna use and see if this helps. Be clear here, it's not going to erase all the cracks. It's gonna fill in the, the pit and then it's going to protect it so that the cracks don't spread. Remember, this windshield was brand new when I bought the RV uh, like a year and a half ago, $2,000 to put that windshield in. So, you know, to, to help my investment, I, I need to make sure that these cracks don't spread. This is the first and only real crack pit that I've gotten on the windshield too, so. First step, I'm gonna clean the whole windshield, get it looking really, really nice, and then we'll, we'll tackle cleaning out the pit of the crack. So the first step is to dig out the pit and they say to use a push pin, which they don't give you and I don't have one. I do have an old uh, clothes pin kind of paper clip thing. So I'm just gonna get in there and get any uh, loose particles out of the pit there. I guess that's what I'm supposed to do, okay. All right, I'm gonna take off the back of this and put this adhesive tab on with the tab sticking up. Like that. With the pit right in the middle there. Make sure that's secure on there. Then peel off the green here. Then we're going to put this on here. Line that up just like that. Like that. Make sure it's in there real good. Okay. Okay, then it says to pour in three quarters of the resin. Make sure it's coming out. Okay, it is. Cool. How do I know when it's three quarters? I think that was three quarters. Save this for step 10, it says. Okay. Okay, then we're going to use our plunger. Make sure it's fit tight right there. And we're going to pull up to the second thing right here until it clicks. There's one. And there's two. Hold it there for 10 minutes like that. All right, it's been 10 minutes. Directions say pull out the plunger momentarily to get some air in there. Put it back in and clip it down to the second mark on there. and leave it there for 10 minutes. No, 20 minutes or more. What do you do while that's uh, curing over there? Well, well, you turn on the water, turn on the fan to high, get that misting going like crazy. <laughs> Crack open a barley pop. Be patient. Oh, you wouldn't like it. All right, it's been about 30 minutes. So I'll take this out. 
It says to use a razor blade to start getting this off, which again, they don't include a razor blade, but I do have one. So we'll go under the tab there. Hopefully that's enough to start pulling this off. Oh, it's kind of coming. It wants to come. Let me set that down. Okay, we got some of it. Wipe that real quick. Guess we're really gonna have to use the blade on here. I thought that would just come up with it. Hey, it looks a lot better though, guys. Uh, it's kind of slippery. Hmm. It's gonna come off in pieces. Okay, wow, I don't even see it. Hang on, wipe this clear again. Oh my gosh, it looks so much better. Clean it with the knife again. Then use the last bit of the resin on this for whatever reason, okay. Please tell me I didn't use it all. Come on, we can get some out of there. There's no more resin in there, guys. It's empty. So I can't do that last step. <laughs> I don't know how we're supposed to know what's two, three quarters of it to use, but you know what? Here, I'll show you. Okay, even though the glass is still really dirty, it's almost completely gone. You can still see it there. It's not as bad as it was though, right? I realize it's really hard to see because no camera really wants to focus on the window. We're all focusing on the outside, but I'm gonna point to it from the inside here. There's the old crack. I'm, well, no, I just can't seem to. Get it in the, anyway, it's barely noticeable anymore. It's basically gone and it definitely won't spread, okay? You know, overall, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I did it myself, I got her done. Um, also, we'll go on a little walk here. I, uh, over the last few days, I've really been having some fun uh, collecting Mickey stuff, Mickey Mouse stuff. Uh, if you can follow my channel, you know I'm taking this pretty seriously. Guys, I, I am actually going for the Guinness Book world record for the biggest Mickey Mouse collection in history. That's what my actual goal is, just so you know. In order for you to understand, I was actually going through some of my old files and I came across, I know I've talked about my old Simpsons and Coca-Cola collections of the past, I found some 2008 really old cell phone video of my Simpsons collection which was valued, which was appraised at $42,000. And yet yeah, I entered the uh, Puyallup Fair hobby collection area there and it got second place one year at state for Washington. So <laughs> in order for you to understand what I see my Mickey Mouse collection evolving into a decade from now, I think you should take a look at what my Simpsons collection actually looked like right before I sold the entire thing for $500 on Craigslist to pay my apartment rent in 2008. Very, very sad and depressing. But let me, let me show you part of my collection and I'm sorry for the quality of the cell phone video. All right, yeah, <laughs> this is some really old video. I've got all the characters on the wall, the pedestal. Look at all the characters on the ground. And I see you see the big duff blanket there and the sleeping bag in the background. Same thing I want to do with uh, Mickey Mouse, the steering wheel cover, and then all these blue shelves. Now, it's kind of hard to see everything in this collection because I'm going through it so fast. He's the telephone. That was telephone there. Chess set. There's some food and stuff and the old video games and VHS TV guides. Look at all this VHS board games, cups of all kinds, coffee cups, stuffed toys. There's some intricate stuff in that little cabinet that I skimmed over. All the little characters. I mean, it was crazy, guys. And I'm using books and towels as background. There's a kite. Yep, and my little neon clock and shirts are in the background. The old dartboard. Look at all these plush toys and all the DVDs and everything. Guys, it was incredibly massive. It's funny. Okay? Okay, to put it into perspective, my Coca-Cola collection was even worth more and took up an entire room, where the Simpsons collection only took up like half a room, okay? That's what I see my Mickey Mouse collection looking like in a decade from now. And it's just a little bit at a time, right? Dollar here, five bucks there. 
everything is going to have a certain history to it of where I got it and how it came into my life and how it got added to my collection at my house in Illinois. So with that said, I have been flea marketing and garage sailing and thrift store searching. I've went to a couple antique stores here in the last few days and I have quite a few new, very unique older pieces and I'm really going for the older retro Mickey stuff to add to the collection and many of these pieces are 70s and 80s that I'm about to show you. Pieces that really are going to make my collection stand out. Very unique from every single era. Somehow I still feel like I'm a little embarrassed even showing you because I literally now have an entire, everything under my bed is all Mickey Mouse stuff. Ready. I'm gonna have to ship it out to my buddy Sean and have him hold it at the shop till I get there because I'm gonna have to cool it. I'm gonna have to start taking it easy here because I'm running out of space in the RV, okay? I have to add on to the house another extra storage or a lean-to or something for it all. But let's, I'm really gonna show you this. Okay, check out this epic additions I have made. Here we go. All right, I know this looks crazy guys, but I'm getting into this, <laughs> okay? I'm really getting into this. Jeez, where do we start here? Let's start in the back here. The uh, Mickey Mouse photo frame. Basically a complete set. These are all plastic. So you got the little saucepans there, the big tray there, and these little plastic cups there with Mickey and Goofy on them. Let's see over here. We got a Walt Disney World. Now you can see it. A Walt Disney World keychain with Mickey. Okay, so this, I don't know if it was supposed to be an electric toothbrush at one time, but it's a toothbrush and toothpaste organizer here, this whole thing. It's also powered, but does not currently work. I may look at it later. This is another Mickey Mouse three-dimensional radio there with the dial right there. A couple Mickey Mouse stickers. That one's from Walt Disney World. A Hallmark ornament with Mickey Sorcerer's Apprentice there. A plastic faded figurine. Also, that bowl goes with that set over there. This is a glass Mickey Mouse piggy bank. All right, this piece here, let me hold it up like this. You pull it like this and Mickey does aerobics. <laughs> Love it. Mickey Mouse push-up puppet. Not exactly sure, 1976 toy though. Let's go back over to the left side here. Mickey Mouse dance a tune. He does come off there. I think this is supposed to spin with some batteries or something like that, but yeah, at least that's complete. And what is this trombone? Oh, that goes to it. Okay. So that little trumpet thing goes to it. Might need batteries. Might need repair. I don't know. That's a Mickey Mouse pencil sharpener. See it? Yep. Mickey Mouse on a tricycle. Bicycle. This piece might not look like Mickey Mouse, but I knew it was a music box. And when I flipped it around, it does say Disney toy on it. Guess what? What do you think happens if we go like this? Mickey! It's like a jack-in-the-box. A Mickey Mouse ball that needs to be inflated a little better and cleaned. See a tiny little Mickey Mouse on metal wheels. A spinning Mickey Mouse that you can make dance. A wind-up Mickey Mouse that walks. This just goes on the wall with his bow tie. Interesting uh, plastic Mickey Mouse here with some red shorts. A Mickey Mouse gavel, I guess it is. Yeah, it's a plastic gavel. A Mickey Mouse rolling thing that will stay up when you knock him over. Okay. Mickey Mouse holding an apple and a suitcase there. I feel like that might be from Sleeping Beauty. I'm not, I'm not sure. A Mickey Mouse wind-up robot here. And I'm going to break it. <laughs> Two Mickey Mouse pins. This one says Superstar. This one looks a little older. It's made of rubber. These are supposed to be magnet, I guess. It does say magnet on the back. Magnetic. Okay, and there's two of them in different sizes. And then from 1976, this Mickey Mouse plush toy here. Finger puppet, maybe. Otherwise, uh, I'm going to try to slow down a little bit on accumulating a bunch of stuff. I'm going to be a little more picky from here on out and just try to get some really unique, original, older stuff. And not so much little tiny stuff because, you know, paying three to five dollars per little thing, I mean, that's going to add up, you know. It's going to get much, much crazier than my magnet collection. Believe me, guys, I'm glad you've been around for the very start, like the very start of this because as now that you've seen my Simpsons collection of the past, you know how dedicated I am to it and how seriously I'm going to take this over the next decade, okay? 
So, meantime, um, I'm not leaving here tomorrow. Staying here one more day. We're just camping. Camping. Although they are encouraging everyone to limit our time outside of RVs. There's no definition to that or anything. So I'm not breaking rules, but I mean, still, limit your time. I mean, it, it depends. I, I need to come outside my RV. We all do. Everybody's coming outside. There are, nobody is staying in their RV the entire time here. Got some other projects I want to do too on the RV. Summer's always project time. Did get the oil change done in the RV and the generator. Both done. Didn't film it because it's always messy and stuff like that, but brand new full synthetic oil in the F53 V10 chassis. Generator starting from scratch. Brand new oil in that. New oil filter. New air filter also. Next time we do it, we're going to be doing fuel filter, spark plug. But anyway, guys, be well. Hope you like this video. Be well, guys. Enjoy your summer. Bye-bye.